Welcome back. Sites such as Airbnb have changed the way many of us book holiday accommodation. But locals living next door to these rental properties say they have no peace in quiet communities. So this is our Airbnb. From Sydney. This is the view. To Melbourne. Yesterday we arrived in Melbourne. And Queensland's beautiful Gold Coast. Holiday letting websites like Airbnb and HomeAway Stays have changed the way we visit our favourite parts of Australia. And for those who rent out their homes, it's an easy way to make money. We actually realised that it could be a great income earner. But has it come at a cost for those who permanently live in these popular holiday destinations? Oh, my, 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 my. You can't put a hotel in a quiet residential street. For neighbours, this type of holiday leasing can be a nightmare. You. It severely impacted the, um, the health uh, of our family and the amenity of our home. Michael Kaur spent three horrendous years living next door to a stays holiday rental. Originally there was 15 people staying in the house next door. There was no regulation and it was uh, parties pretty much every single night. His once quiet waterfront home on the Gold Coast became drowned out by noise when a new neighbour who purchased the house next door rented it out for short term leasing. Our intention was to move south and west of the surface paradise area to raise a family. Um, this was a beautiful street. The disturbance caused by groups of families and young party animals made raising his own family very difficult. It's not a family with children that have to go to work in the morning, that have to bring their children to school in the morning. While he's trying to put his kids to sleep or relax on the outdoor patio, the guests next door are in party mode. So the kids are screaming in the pool from seven o'clock in the morning for three, four hours at a time. These images and recordings show some of what Michael and his family have had to put up with. While the internet is full of promotional videos for holiday letting houses, Michael has done his own video compile of the not so pleasant side. Certainly seeing an increase that probably growing a little faster than the rest of Australia at the moment. This is what an Airbnb spokesperson had to say about growth in southeast Queensland last year, the most popular destination being the Gold Coast. Today, suburbs like Broadbeach and Mermaid Waters have become saturated. On this holiday letting super street, there are at least seven properties up for rent on one booking service alone. Across the rest of the suburb, more than 250 properties. They range in price from $160 to $2,000 a night. Well, they're a nuisance to their neighbours because of the noise. I think if the, if the owners are careful with who they put in, they put in families, they're usually OK. So. It's when they get a bunch of young kids in there that the problem arises. There's one of them over the canal from me and I don't have an issue, really. I don't have a problem. Around the country, areas like Bondi in New South Wales and St Kilda in Victoria are also very popular. It's been reported the residential EQ tower in the Melbourne CBD has become more like a hotel with dozens of short-term listings. I believe there's over 12,000 Airbnbs that have started up in Melbourne over the past 12 to 24 months. This map of Byron Bay shows how densely placed properties are there. In Fremantle, near Perth, and Holdfast Bay, next to Adelaide, holidaymakers are also spoilt for choice. In my opinion, I cannot see how it is legal that they can operate these holiday lets in a quiet suburban area. In New South Wales, Airbnb is spruiking the value of its industry to the economy. It comes as the state government threatens to limit the length of time guests can stay to 150 days. A current affair recently heard from the residents of this Sydney apartment block who claimed their building had been overrun by holiday tenants. It's, uh, it's just not a good place to be. There's certainly money to be made through short-term rentals, but it seems some people are rorting the system. This house is owned by the Public Housing Department and the person living here is accused of renting the place out on Airbnb during the Commonwealth Games, pocketing up to $100 a night in the process. If these tenants plan to make money out of a house, then they need to go and set up a business legally. Deb Frecklington is the LNP State Opposition Leader in Queensland. 
Her party raised the issue of renting public housing properties through Airbnb in Parliament and the government was on the back foot. The government has said, look, it's fine, you've rented out your house, you're making a huge amount of money from it, uh, and it's fine, you can stay in your house. The policy of this government is quite clear. The subletting uh, of uh, department properties is prohibited. Some are cashing in on the opportunities bought by short-term leasing. Others are calling for stricter rules. It needs to be proper regulation of the holiday let, not self-regulation. That three-year nightmare is now over for Michael. He won his battle against home away stays, who are now looking to introduce a three strikes policy to deter bad behaviour by guests. And you can read their full statement and one from Airbnb on our website.